And welcome back to another edition of the Quarantine Q&A here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. I'm Sean Myers, joined by my co-host Dan Flickinger. We're talking to local athletic directors in Westmoreland County. And today we welcome in the seventh year AD at Dairy Area, Brett Miller. Brett, thank you for taking the time to do this. It's unfortunate that these are the circumstances that prompted this, but we're glad to have you on. What have you been doing recently and what, uh, in terms of your background for people maybe unfamiliar with you in your seven plus years at Dairy Area? Yeah, so to uh, answer your first question, Sean and, and Dan, um, what have we been doing to keep ourselves busy? We're, I think a lot of us are doing the things that we didn't have time to do uh, when the sports seasons were going on. For example, um, we're looking at our athletic strategic plan uh, trying to map out the next several years. Uh, we're getting ready for a pretty substantial project uh, in athletics, which is a replacement of our of our football field. We're, we're going to resod the field here um, in the next couple months. Uh, once graduation occurs or, or whatever happens with graduation, we're not sure yet. Um, you know, so just planning those kinds of things. Um, we're going to be having some coaches meetings coming up. Uh, we're going to be having an athletic committee meeting coming up here very soon. That's next week as well. Um, so just doing a lot of housekeeping things in our athletic program that, that we haven't had an opportunity to do uh, here as, uh, as of late. Uh, one of the things I've been busy with is uh, part of my job is also uh, the school security and safety coordinator position, uh, or Act 44 as it's more commonly called. And we've been rewriting our, our pretty much our entire emergency operating plan, which, which spells out our district's response um, in, in times of crisis. So before, uh, before coronavirus really occurred uh, in the United States, we didn't have a pandemic response plan, um, but now we do. And, and uh, we completed that in, in partnership with our school nurse, Wendy Angus. So um, a lot of housekeeping things, a lot of organizational stuff um, that we've been doing and trying to get done that we typically don't have time to do um, when we're in the school year. Um, but, uh, you know, prior to dairy, uh, to answer your second question, um, I spent four years at Ligonier Valley and, uh, you know, of those four years, my first year, um, there were, there were the two high schools, Ligonier and Laurel Valley, uh, in my first year there uh, until they merged into what is now considered Ligonier Valley high school. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been a, a good time. Um, I've enjoyed my time as an AD here in Westmoreland County and, uh, I'm looking forward to continuing. And, of course, you're a Mount Pleasant High School graduate. I think we played against each other in football at some point in our uh, illustrious high school careers, Brett. So we got to throw that in there, too. Well, who won the game? I think Derry did. You're an AD at Derry. you got to say Derry now. I don't remember. But I, we had some success against Mount Pleasant, I think. You know, just to correct Dan there, I'm, I just happened to pull the yearbooks here not long ago because uh, I'm working on a special project for the school district on the athletic side of things. And I just so happened to op up, open up the football tab. And I think it was about a 30-point spread that Mount Pleasant clobbered down. Oh, it definitely year. wasn't. Oh, man, I don't know what book you're looking at. Uh, that book is correct. Yeah, so. I bet. I bet. I'll tell you where yeah. you can pull it out of. Anyway, uh, Brett. <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of football, um, something we didn't uh, prepare to talk to you about today. We have a number of topics to uh, get into uh, today, but uh, one of the big topics that just broke was the resignation of Tim Sweeney. Uh, had some incredibly successful years as dairy area football coach, but. Uh, he has decided to step away from his alma mater and take the head coaching job at Baldwin. And I know the travel has been very tough for him, and he, he has had a, uh, a son for a few years now, was born a few years ago, Deuce, as they call him. Um, but uh, just kind of talk about Coach Sweeney and, and the incredible seasons that he's had, uh, the pride that he's brought back to the Dairy Area football program. And just I'm sure you've talked to him uh, by now. Uh, just kind of what his thought process was. If you could share some of that, his thought process was of uh, leaving Derry and, and taking the head coaching job at Baldwin. And, of course, what you guys have to do now as a school district through this pandemic to find a new football coach as soon as possible. Yeah, so let me, let me start by saying, you know, Coach Sweeney, uh, you know, I've developed a great relationship with him uh, over the years. Uh, we, we've become pretty good friends. And, um, you know, I, I've known for quite a while that he was interested in, in some other positions um, outside of the Derry School District for just for the reason that, you know, he's now living in near Pittsburgh, I, I believe in the South Hills. And, and those were the positions only that he would be interested in. Uh, are, are the positions in that area. So I, I know he's been looking for a little while and, uh, you know, we're sad to see him go. Um, you know, when I took, when I came to Derry, uh, our football team was 0 and 10 my first year. Uh, and then we hired a uh, coach, I believe in December, 2013. 
And, uh, you know, th there's no looking back after that. Next thing you know, we're playing at Hines Field. We're, we're a perennial playoff contender, uh, thanks to him and his staff. Um, and that's one thing about Tim. Uh, he'll never take credit for anything. He'll always pass the credit on to the kids and his staff. Um, and that's just the type of guy that he was over the years. You know, but, but again, we're sad to see Tim go. Um, however, you know, based on my conversations with him, the only reason he's leaving uh, is that he's living down there. Um, when we hired him, he wasn't married at the time, nor did he have his son, Deuce. And, uh, you know, now he has both of those things. And, and like he said, uh, you know, his priority is his family first. And, and that's his wife, Robin, and his son, Deuce. And uh, he's got to take care of some things down there. But, you know, we wish him the best of luck. Um, I was on the phone with the uh, athletic director from Baldwin. Um, we talked for about a half hour. Um, and, and he just asked me some questions about Tim, and, and I told him, I said, look, I said, you're getting a winner. Uh, I said, he's a, he's a, nothing is going to stand in Tim's way. He's going to win football games. Um, his character is, is going to lead the program. People are going to follow him, um, and that their football program is in good hands. So we wish Tim the best. Um, whoever comes in after Tim is going to have some serious uh, shoes to fill. Um, but we're looking to start that process ASAP. And, you know, fortunately in my conversations with Tim, uh, he's more than interested in being a part of this transition process to a new head coach. So he's going to be involved in the future of dairy um, for a very long time. You know, he, he said it numerous times that he's a dairy boy. Um, and, and that's very true. He, he bleeds blue and gold. Um, and he's going to continue to be involved in our football program as, as well as our school district in, in some, some type of capacity here moving forward. Uh, to answer your question about how we're going to move forward, uh, we need to start as soon as possible. Um, we're going to start to advertise. We, we have an obligation that we have to advertise uh, internally um, amongst our faculty and staff for a two-week period. We don't find any candidates among our faculty and staff that we feel are, are best fit for that program um, that we'll advertise externally and uh, continue the search. But, uh, you know, it's it's now April. Uh, May is going to be here before we know it. And, and really, the season has started now, um, although it officially starts in August because of weight training and, and so on and so forth. But um, we need to get somebody in there pretty quick. Uh, the, the current pandemic uh, that's affecting our world right now does present some challenges because we can't really interview anyone face to face. Um, so uh, we're going to take a look at that. Our athletic committee is, is going to be meeting very soon to discuss some of these items and uh, develop a plan moving forward. But you know, we're confident that with success that that program has had over the last couple of years, that that's going to attract some quality hires or some quality candidates, rather, uh, into the program so that way we can find somebody to continue leading that program. Brett, what specifically would you say right now that, that you personally and the committee would be looking, um, looking in for a, a future football coach for you? You know, I, I'll go back to when we interviewed Tim. Um, we had we had a lot of candidates that had more coaching experience than, than Coach Sweeney. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit nervous uh, when we were going through that interview process because because Tim was our, our chosen candidate, you know, after the second round. And one of the concerns that I had about Tim was, was he didn't have a whole lot of – he had no head coaching experience whatsoever, um, but he didn't have a lot of assistant coaching experience. The one thing that stood out with Tim – uh, through the interview process, what's his personality and, and his, uh, uh, um, his personality and, and his character, his presence um, was the one thing that, that I'll never forget. Uh, when I was in my office, my office used to be in the administration building, and uh, Robbie Yeckley was my secretary. She's now at Grandview Elementary. Uh, but Robbie called me and she says, there's, there's someone here um, to give you an application for the, the head football coach position. And I said, okay, you know, just have them, you know, just take the application and we'll give them a call. We'll put it in the pile and, and evaluate it later. And uh, I remember Robbie saying, well, I, I think you want to, I think you want to meet this one. And I said, okay, I'll be down. And, and I walked down the hallway and he was wearing a, a blue Penn State windbreaker. <laughs> and uh, I remember looking at him. I thought, who, who is this guy? Because he looked like a, a politician. And, uh, you know, because Tim, always, you know, he had the white hair, the gray hair and, and, uh, you know, he stood up, all, all six foot three of them, or, or however tall he is, and I said, you know, who, who is this guy? This guy looks important, and, and and it was from that day that his his presence was was just simply a a huge factor in, in hiring him as a coach. Um, every committee member that, that served on that interview committee when we hired Tim will tell you that we all wanted to put a helmet on and, and run through a wall for him when he was done. And, and those are the kinds of qualities that we're looking for. Um, you know, high school football, it, it has to be a simple 
uh, strategy. The X's and O's have to be simple because you're teaching a, a dynamic, or not a dynamic, but a diverse group of kids with various learning abilities. And if you come in with a, a complex strategy, they're not going to grasp it. Um, that's the other thing that, that stood out to us with Tim, uh, or for Tim, it was that he, he broke things down very simply. Every time we interview a coach, we do an X's and O's session. Uh, if a coach can't coach the X's and O's, he's not going to be very successful, he or she. And, um, you know, coach came in and did a, did a very uh, simple play up on the dry erase board. He explained all of the positions, responsibilities, very clear. Everyone in the room understood the X's and O's. And um, if a coach is, is able to do that, then he's going to be very successful at dairy. So there's a lot of factors, but I would say the, the presence of that individual, uh, the charisma, and, and the ability to, to teach uh, for understanding to our kids uh, the concepts and strategies of football uh, are very, very crucial. Brett, as successful as the football program has been for the, the better half of this decade, Last year, there was some concern with the incoming class, the freshmen. There was not a lot of participants for football. And I know that talking to Coach Sweeney, he was a little concerned about that. Is that a concern going forward that maybe the numbers with this program will continue to dwindle? Or is there a bounce back that you anticipate? So we were very concerned last year with the numbers at the middle school level, and that's transitioned up to, I'm sorry, not last year, but the year before. So it would be the 2018 season. We had to stop the middle school football program with about two weeks left in the season because we had so few kids. And what was happening was we were putting 78 and 80 pound linemen um, up against teams from Bel Vernon that had 40, 45 kids. And, and it really became a safety issue. It wasn't doing our kids or our program um, any good uh, fielding a team like that. So that transitioned into the varsity program last year where we had very, very low freshman numbers. Now, we're going to run into trouble here over the next couple of years because that's going to continue that little, um, you know, those one or two kids that were freshmen that came out this year, um, that's going to continue up through the program. And so we're going to struggle over the next couple of years. Um, you want to have nice participation numbers, and we're probably not going to have a whole lot, uh, a whole lot of participation numbers over the next couple of years. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But with that said, I, I fully expect the football program to remain a, a perennial uh, playoff contender uh, because they're playing in a very, uh, a very nice section. The section's not changing a, a whole lot. Um, I think it's to our benefit some of the teams that we're playing next year. Um, and so I, I don't think that we're going to take as much of a step back as some may think that we will. Um, but, you know, I, I think for two or three years, uh, we're probably uh, – it, it's probably going to be close if we make the playoffs. After that, I think we have a lot of talent coming up through. I mean, our middle school numbers were solid uh, this past season. I think we were at around 28 or, or 30 kids, um, and, and those, those kids are athletes. And then we have a lot of youth football players. The numbers are really high in that program this year coming up through. So the, the future is, is very bright with Derry. Um, I think we're going to be just fine, um, you know, or, or we're going to make it to the semis or, or Heinz Field the next couple of years. Um, I, I don't know. That story's yet to be written. We, we might be surprised. Um, I do know we have some freshmen that didn't come out last year that are that are going to be sophomores next year that will come out. And, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll see some of those. Uh, I think we'll see some good happen here over the next couple of years with our football program. But. The new coach that comes in, uh, he's going to have to spend some time recruiting into the program uh, and getting kids uh, motivated and, and ready to move forward with a new head coach. Brett, one of the, the best players in recent memory for the football team was Justin Huss, but he wasn't just a football player. He was a terrific athlete. Unfortunately, he had a very severe injury early in his senior basketball campaign. So I wanted to touch base with you in regarding a health update on him and overall just the impact that he had at Dairy Area as a whole athletically. Yeah, so mo there's probably a lot of people who don't know this, but his mom, Kim, is actually our, our athletic secretary. Um, so I get daily updates on Justin. It, it, it's, it's kind of funny, but you know, Kim's, Kim's awesome. She does a, a ton of work for the athletic department. I, I think she's more the athletic director than I am most of the time, but <laughs> um, you know, she runs the show there. She runs a tight ship, but you know, Justin's healing up nice, according to Kim, and uh, you know, the bones are coming back together really, really nice. He, he's working out. Um, recovering very well, and uh, we were actually looking forward to seeing him run track uh, this spring season. As you know, he, he broke some records last year and, and uh, you know, finished. Uh, he medaled last year at, in states, and uh, we were really looking forward to, to watching him compete in this season this year. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the world situation that we have right now is, is preventing that uh, for the uh, for the time being, but you know, what a year he had. I mean, breaking the rushing, breaking the single game rushing record against Burl. 
um, during the, the season and then and then owning the uh, school district rushing record, I, I believe, with 2,020 yards uh, in 2020 um, was, was pretty impressive. Well, I guess it was 2019 he broke it, but still uh, 2,020 yards and, and we're in the year 2020. But uh, what, what a great kid. I mean, last year we we saw him, um, you know, broke broke bones in the other leg. This year he broke bone, bones in the opposite leg in, in the basketball season. And uh, he's been nothing but the uh, uh, but, a, but a persistent and uh, uh, committed person to, to athletics. So we're wishing him the best of luck. He's, he's off to uh, Washington and Jefferson uh, next year, W and J. And uh, so we're looking forward to watching him play football down there. Brett, you mentioned earlier uh, one of the big projects you guys are undertaking right now as a school is re the football field, and I know that was uh, a big issue on all the you know, social media sites a couple of years ago uh, when you guys played Central Valley and um, the, you know, the field was, was a mess because of how hard it rained that season. Um, but it, in our opinion, I remember on the broadcast, it's, it's hey, it's home field advantage, first round of the playoffs. You know, Central Valley had to come play on grass, and, and you guys took it, uh, took it to them and, and used it to your advantage. Um, but you mentioned your re What kind of went into that decision to re as opposed to turf? I think it really boils down to cost. And, you know, our, our district is probably looking at a substantial renovation, um, you know, in the next several years. Um, and turf may be considered at that point, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, when you look at our football stadium field, um, the only the only sports to play on that are football, soccer, uh, girls and boys soccer, and um, you know even soccer they, they have their own soccer field, so their their use of that field is pretty limited. Um, so you can maintain a nice uh, a nice grass field um, in that stadium for not a whole lot of money. But you know what really went into it was we get a lot of compliments on our on our football field uh, being natural grass and not artificial turf. I, like you said with the Central Valley game, that was that was home field advantage. And uh, that's something special that, that we want to uh, hopefully maintain over the next, you know, near near term, you know, five to ten years uh, moving forward. So, um, you know, looking at the cost, there, there was a substantial cost difference between resodding and, and putting down artificial turf. You're looking at, you know, 250000 for um, new uh, new resod and drainage, which is what we're going to be doing, uh, versus a, a little over $1 million if you want to do it correct. Um, you know, you go to a lot of these stadiums, you see the color in the end zones, the logo on the field. And what a lot of people don't understand is it's not just putting outdoor carpeting down over gravel and sand. Um, you got to look at, uh, you know, perforation levels, uh, ratios rather. So that way you're, you're ensuring that your artificial turf is draining correctly. Um, you know, in talking to some other ADs, uh, just simply knowing whether the stone you're putting down is, is clean or not makes a substantial difference because the dust on the stone clogs the drains in the future as it rains. But so there's a lot that goes in. You, you can buy a cheap product, buy a cheap artificial turf product, um, but you're going to pay for it uh, a couple years from then. So we decided to go with the, the resod job. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with the, uh, the, the pandemic, um, what the state's going to tell us and uh, how that's going to impact graduation and spring sports. And as soon as we have a direction on that, we're going to start that project and uh, it'll be ready for the fall season. And when does the Westmoreland Sports Network booth, we get our own private booth with this um, project, right? Is that kind of how this works? Yeah, you do. It. It's it's actually uh, scheduled to be done in 2075. 2075? How long does it take to put mm -hmm. in an extra booth? That, that long, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, Westmoreland Sports is paying for it, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, then that that's 2075 <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> We're talking to Brett Miller, the athletic director at Dairy Area, as part of the quarantine Q&A here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Brett, we talked a lot about football, a fall sport. You just mentioned spring sports and the uncertainty there. Nothing has officially been determined. Probably a bleak outlook at this point. But I want to focus on some of the spring sports because there seem to be a lot going on at Dairy Area. A new softball coach in John De Palma set to take his team for the first time on the field. Unfortunately, that didn't happen with any games being played. And I think every spring there's excitement with Dairy Area Boys Volleyball. It's been a terrific program. So I know that there's obviously baseball. There's a handful of sports, track and field. What were you most looking forward to in the spring sports season? You know, I was really looking forward to seeing how John did with John De Palma did with our softball program. We had a lot of good athletes in that program, a lot of good young athletes, and I wanted to see how he was going to uh, really mold them and, and build them up throughout the season. Uh, they've been a they've been a, a playoff contender the last two seasons. Uh, I wanted to see how they did under John, and uh, you know when I was at League in Your Valley, we had great softball. 
Uh, we always competed in the, the state tournament with Mark Zimmerman as the head coach. Um, saw a lot of great softball players over there. Uh, Maddie Grimm, uh, Kristen Gaybelt, just to name, name two. Christine Henderson was a phenomenal pitcher for us. Hmm. And uh, I, I really had a, a great appreciation for that sport when I was at Ligonier and um, was kind of bummed out when I came over to, to Derry and, and found out that their their softball program struggled just a bit. So uh, uphill climb here the last several years, I really felt that John was going to put them over the top of the hill there, uh, or at least get them to the peak and, and kind of get them moving forward. So I was really looking forward to seeing our softball team compete this year. And, you know, I'm just disappointed because I think we were going to have a, an excellent spring season with softball, baseball. Um, baseball, I, I anticipated them making the playoffs again under the leadership of head coach John Flickinger. Um, and then our boys volleyball team, I mean, like you said, Sean, they're, they're, they're annual contenders in the, in the uh, WPIL and the PIAA playoffs. And we were really looking forward to watching them compete for a section title and, and possibly a WPIL championship again. Um, then track and field, I mean, they've won a couple of section championships over the last several years. Mark Curcio, he, he's done a nice job with that program. Kids are motivated. Uh, they're competing well. And, uh, you know, we had the uh, the one, the Perry girl. We look forward to her doing some nice things in the high jump and, and uh, looking at Justin Huss and his return um, as well from injury in the winter season. The the winter teams had some success at, as well at Dairy Area, um, as well as some individual accomplishments. We'll first focus on the team aspect. Girls basketball really was a terrific story and our good friend Gene Brisbane led the way his first year he completely turns around a program that quite frankly had a lot of instability in terms of the coaching I believe he was the fourth coach in four seasons what did he bring to the table that allowed that team to have success and how important is it that there is some coaching stability with that program going forward you know, to address the, the stability, I, I think that's that's probably the, the, the biggest thing uh, for us moving forward. Is it is it now going into next year? As far as I know, I don't have any concerns as to our girls' basketball program and who's going to be coaching that program. Um, you know, what Gene brings to the table is, is the one thing that he brings to the table is credibility um, and, and consistency. Uh, you know, he showed up uh, for his first open gym. He had two girls there. Um, in the fitness center, and they were starting weight uh, conditioning um, early in the season. And he handed me a script for his open gym practice, and it had everything boiled down to the exact minute as to where he was going to be, when he was going to be there, and what he was going to be doing. And, and I took that, and I put that in my pocket after I read it, and I said, we're going to be just fine. And, uh, you know, a couple months later, uh, they qualified for the playoffs again uh, for the first time since, I think, 2016, 2017 season um, when they won their section title last when Richie Zembo was there. And, um, you know, that program is, is definitely on the upswing, but they're going to they're gonna struggle the same way football uh, probably will next year in, in terms of participation numbers. Um, you know, they graduated a big senior class this year. Uh, and a lot of talent out of that senior class with Danielle Mullen, Cam Kelly, the Ackerman girl, um, and, and several others. So they're they're gonna they're gonna struggle, um, in, but I know Gene's gonna do a lot to get girls into that program between now and, and next year. But you know, um, that's a, that's a story that I'll never forget. If I ever write a book, I'll have a, a Brisbane chapter or a Briz <laughs> chapter for sure, um, because uh, to get him into our program. Um, we, we certainly got lucky, and we're very fortunate to have Gene Brisbane at the helm of our girls' basketball program. And, Brett, I'm sure that's something that Gene talked about a lot. Um, you know, we've had an opportunity to uh, not only know Gene for a number of years but have him a part of our, our broadcast crew whenever he wasn't coaching. And uh, he, he had mentioned how proud he was of not only the teams that he coached but the programs that he built at, especially at, at Hemfield, where he was for a number of years. I'm sure that's something that he's talked to you a lot about, where he doesn't just want to come in and coach one team. He wants to build a program at Derry where he can get those numbers consistent every year, right? Yeah, he's not a one-and-done. Um, you know, he's not a one-and-done guy. He's the type of guy that wants to be successful. Um, at the end of the day, when he does decide to step away from the basketball program at Derry, he's not going to be happy unless he, A, knows he did everything he possibly can to make that program successful, and B, uh, to make sure that, that that program is successful when he does leave it and he leaves it in good shape. Um, when he's done, his personality doesn't allow for anything otherwise. He, he's a he's a perfectionist, and he he is one of the hardest workers I've ever met. Um, you know, this is this is uh, I think year number eleven for me as an athletic director, and and I learned a ton from from Gene this year um, in watching him coach and watching him how to run a program, um, and, and a lot of those qualities and a lot of those things he did are, are things that I'm going to take with me. 
uh, throughout my career uh, in helping young coaches and experienced coaches, coaches build a program. So, um, like I said before, very fortunate to have Gene and, and really looking forward to uh, to having him coach within our program over the next several years. Something that Briz prides himself on, I think he said, I don't even know how many years consecutively that he's never missed a day of exercising, he says. He's worked out every day for the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years or whatever it's been. So he's, he's always on a treadmill or, you know, on the sidelines running up and down the court yelling at referees. So <laughs> I, I, always knew, I always knew where to find him uh, before practice. He was always in the fitness center walking on a treadmill. That's and right. He was always on the same treadmill. And, and, but, you know, again, uh, that consistency in his personal life carries over to coaching, and, and that's a recipe for success. I mean, that, that's, that's something that we've tried to establish in our athletic program over the years is, is consistency. Um, we've been successful in some areas and, and not in the others, and you know, hopefully we can we can fix some of those problems we've had. When you talk about consistency, it's been consistent excellence for wrestler Ty Zimmerman, and mm-hmm. Westmoreland County in general has been known for great wrestling. I think Derry area has had a lot of great individual wrestlers and some pretty good team success, but Ty certainly cemented himself as one of the best in your school's history, winning a number, another WPIAL title. When you look at him and his success, how is that bred? What led to his great ability and his success on the mat over the last three years? I think just what we said about Coach Brisbane, I think it's consistency. I mean, you, 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 want, you have to want to be great, and you have to do that on a consistent basis. You can't just wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, I, I want to work out today because I want to be great, uh, you know, in six or seven months. You have to wake up, you know, Sunday through Saturday, um, and, and challenge yourself. I mean, you're going to wake up sore, tired, sick, um, and, and demotivated, but you got to find a way to, to motivate yourself to work, and, and you have to work on it over and over and over again. And, you know, I, I did a lot of reading about Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, with the unfortunate passing of him uh, earlier this year, and uh, just in, in, in reading about his uh, work habit in, in terms of improving himself, um, the amount of time that he spent in, in, with free throws and passing and, and just shooting in general, um, that's what you have to be. If you want to be great, you have to put the time and the effort in and, and, and you have to challenge yourself to just get better every single day. Um, it's a grind. Uh, a lot of kids don't have it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. A lot of kids don't have it. But the great ones like Ty Simmerman, they do have it. And that's that's why he won a WPIAL championship three years in a row. And that's why I think he's going to win a state championship next year because he's upset because the last two years he didn't meet his goal. Um, you know, last year he, he fell short and this year he fell short again. And uh, he's not going to be happy with it. And, and I know right now uh, he's doing something today to get better uh, to win a state title next year. So I look forward to going down to Hershey and, uh, and watching him do that next year. Brett, you highlighted that before Dairy Area, you were the AD at Ligonier Valley for a handful of years. And for the first time in about 50 years, Ligonier Valley will be in the WPIAL next year. Uh, Big news in Westmoreland County. I'm sure you personally had an opinion and a reaction to it. What was your thoughts when you heard that news? You know what? I'm excited for them. I I thought when I was the AD at Ligonier Valley that the WPIAL would have been a nice fit for them. Um, I'm happy to see that they made that decision to come over. Um, I'm glad that we're going to have them on the schedule uh, for our coaches and our, our players' sake because um, that's going to be a close road trip for a lot of our a lot of our coaches and a lot of our families uh, to travel to, uh, in general. But um, you know, it, it's it's going to be a challenge for them. I, I think you know I don't want to knock the Heritage Conference because there's a lot of great teams in the Heritage Conference. We played some of them this year in several sports, um, and, and we kind of got our bell rung in, in some of our you know in basketball and uh, in soccer. So. Um, a lot of good athletics in the Heritage Conference, but I, I think Ligonier is, is better suited to be a WPIAL team, and and I think I think a lot of their teams this year are going to make some noise uh, in making the playoffs and, and, and being successful. Uh, a lot of the coaches that were there when I was there are still there. They've been very fortunate to have a successful um, uh, staff of coaches there, and and that's bred success for them. I mean, one of the programs I look at that, that's been very successful is their football program. Um, Roger Beidel does a nice job with the football program program over there. The kids buy into his program. He's committed to it. Um, I remember when I was the AD there, he was there every day uh, helping, helping work, uh, work the kids in the weight room. So, you know, they're going to come over. They're going to challenge a lot of these WPIL teams. And I'm just glad that, glad that the Ligonier kids uh, get an opportunity to compete in WPIL. 
Brett, uh, going back to football, we're asking all of the athletic directors their opinions on the WPIAL football realignment. Uh, there were a number of options out there. Some were uh, a little radical, but what they decided to go with was uh, kind of the norm. Uh, but there are some changes and some changes for Derry. I, I thought that um, – I think that you guys are in a good conference, although it's a little bit strange that, uh, you know, Mount Pleasant's no longer in your conference and, and Mount, um, not only Mount Pleasant, but Yawk and, of course, Southmoreland moving up from 2A to 3A. It seemed like it would have made sense to have Derry, Southmoreland, Mount Pleasant and Yawk in the same conference. But instead, um, you know, you guys are with Burl Valley and Freeport. So uh, your thoughts about realignment and just kind of how some things change a little bit for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a professional response to that. Uh, <laughs> it's opposed to my personal opinion. But, you know, when, when the alignments first came out, you know, Tim and I talked about those and, and we weren't we weren't crazy about them, um, but we, we were accepting of them. Uh, what we liked about the, the initial proposal, uh, and if you remember correctly, they had a couple different variations. They wanted to do it by geography where you might play a 4A or a 2A school. Yeah. And we were OK with that. Um, and then it was by class, and, and we were okay with a couple of the scenarios because Ligonier was on our schedule, and I, I believe Mount Pleasant was as well. Um, then they released the actual sections. We we had voted uh, we had voted for them to um, do the section realignment by classification, I believe. Uh, I can't remember which option that was that, that the Whippio had it listed, but then when the actual section alignments came out they were a little bit different than what we had voted for. And we were kind of surprised by that because we thought we were voting for what was actually on paper, um, which would have uh, had us playing Mount Pleasant and Ligonier and I think Plum and in Indiana. So um, when they came out, we were a bit surprised. We were a little bit upset about that. But uh, over time, we, we started to digest that. And uh, Mount Pleasant was back on the schedule, but Ligonier was not. Um, so we, we, we dropped Ligonier, but we got Mount Pleasant, who's, who's more of a rivalry, more of a traditional rivalry for us. And so we were happy with that. Um, you know, the amount of travel is something that we always have to look at. And, you know, so so I, I had I'm a data driven type person. and I had to look at uh, Google Maps and I, I had to map everything out. And the actual average travel time uh, with our new section is less than what it would have been if we would have had Tom Pleasant in South Florida. Interesting. Yacht. So, interesting. It, it did, so on paper with, with the with the uh, with the numbers, it worked out. But, um, you know, we would like to have the traditional opponents. Yawk, Southmoreland, and Mount Pleasant. Um, but we're happy that we get to keep Latrobe on the schedule, and uh, we'll get Ligonier here one of these days uh, down the road. And, so. you, and you mentioned Mount Pleasant, so you'll still play them in a non-conference game, correct? Yeah, I believe I believe that's the week one game. So week zero is Latrobe, week one is Mount Pleasant. So the schedule, the schedule, it's a tough schedule. Uh, it's not going to be any easier. Mount Pleasant will be strong next year. You know, Latrobe's been on the the uptrend, and uh, so we'll, we'll see how things go. You mentioned Ligonier Valley. I'm sure you guys are trying to do, and and you've played them in various sports, uh, regardless if they're in the WPIL or not. But now that they are in the WPIL, I'm sure um, you guys are trying to do everything that you can to get them on your schedule even as, as a non-conference game, whether it's football in the future, basketball, baseball, and all those types of sports, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as an AD, you always try to call your, your bordering schools first to try to get them on the schedule. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head everything they're in for next year, but I know we have them in volleyball, uh, I believe boys soccer, uh, cross-country golf. So in, in the vast majority of the sports that we play them, uh, that we have, we, we have Ligonier on the schedule. So um, I think basketball, we may miss them in girls, um, but in boys, they might very well be in our classification. However, that's to be determined because uh, the, the PIAA and the WPL haven't released that information yet. So I'm guessing you've had a lot more free time. Now, I know you're still working a lot from home, but it's been a different schedule for you. How have you adapted to this new schedule, and have you found any new hobbies or anything that, to kind of pass this extra time? Yeah, so my wife and I, uh, once, once we started working from home, unfortunately, one of our, one of our uh, dogs passed away. And uh, so that. we decided Sorry, to get right. a puppy. So that's been consuming my time uh, for the last several days. We, we got a puppy and brought her home here. Uh, over the weekend. Uh, What's the name? Uh, Lulu is the name. <laughs> She's a, you know, funny, funny story. Did you or Sarah name dog. the dog? Uh, <laughs> Sarah named the dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sarah named the dog. So uh, I, I actually couldn't come up with any names, which is which is uncharacteristic of me, <laughs> but uh, I'm usually pretty good with nicknames. I, I think I have a nickname for just about everybody. I think that's a sports thing. But I'll ask you off um, the air about mine, so. 
Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, Lucy, who was our who, who was our dog, that passed away. Uh, you know, that was the first dog that we got when we got married. Um, you know, it was one of my it was my wife's favorite dog, and, and so she she took it pretty hard. But uh, so we were fortunate to find this one, um, West West Highland White Terrier. Um, we knew she was the right one because we always like we always like unique things. And uh, if you know anything about these these West Highland White Terriers, they're all white. That's, that's why they're called <laughs> White Terriers. And this one had a black ear, so we said, "What the heck? Let's get one with a black ear." But uh, so we brought her home, and, and she's chewing on everything in the house right now. <laughs> <laughs> have you uh have you had a favorite moment that sticks out during your tenure whether it be at dairy area or even going back to ligonier valley it, it's hard to say it's hard to pick out one favorite moment i mean it's almost it's almost like a pot of favorite moments um you know looking back at ligonier valley it was it was completing that first year uh as a, as a combined school district and seeing the success that our teams had uh, i mean the football team did well that year you know um, they, they made it to the playoffs and unfortunately lost. We had a lot of great, uh, great teams that year. Uh, the softball team, you know, they, they always made it into the state tournament. That was always a good team or always a good time rather. Um, you know, at Derry, uh, I think you have to say that, that probably one of the highlights of, of, of my career was when the football team made it to Heinz field. Uh, and not so much because the football team had success, but it was more so, the amount of community uh, togetherness that, that, that occurred. Um, my wife and I stayed downtown the night before because I, I like to get to places early. So we wanted to get down to the stadium early that morning. And um, I couldn't find a parking spot because all the dairy uh, community members took all the parking parking spots. So I, I had the, I can't remember where I parked, but it wasn't very close. But uh, as I walked toward the stadium, um, it was just blue and gold and blue and gold and blue and gold. And, and it was really something to see people out tailgating before and after the game. And uh, it was really something to watch as an AD and, and know that you had just a little, little tiny part in, in something good like that happening. But, you know, anytime, you know, Mickey Phillippe going back to him when he won his, his state title his senior year, um, that was a special moment. Um, you know, always go into the Judge Driscoll banquets with our top male and female athletes. It's always a special moment because they're the, they're the best of our best. But, you know, it, it's uh, in volleyball. I mean, how can you forget volleyball? All the playoff games that they've been involved in, uh, you know, I, I think it was two years ago, uh, the volleyball team competed for WPIL championship against Ambridge. Um, that was a lot of fun. So, you know, what, what's what's been maybe the most fun uh, item, if I had to pick one, is, is watching the development of, of tradition um, over the last couple of years, because I, I do feel like uh, the dairy athletic teams have, have experienced more success in the last few years than, than they have prior to. And, and that's a testament to our kids and our coaches as well, um, working hard on a consistent basis to, to try to turn things around. Brett, I, I was with you uh, that day. And, you know, after the game, and, and boy, that just thinking back to it, it almost feels like it didn't even happen. It feels surreal that, that mm -hmm. you know, as, as a dairy grad and, and as, uh, you know, dairy athletic director that, you know, you've been there for a number of years to be able to uh, live through something like that. And, and not only at Heinz Field, but the community support and, and everybody rushing the field after dairy came back to beat North Catholic in one of the greatest games ever and probably the greatest game ever in, in, in dairy mm -hmm. athletics history. Um, you know, just thinking, you know, back to those days. And, and by the way, the, that broadcast is still available. People can go back and watch it. I, I've, I've done that a little bit on, on the quarantine, but just to see how the dairy community came together during uh, that time was absolutely incredible. Hopefully we can get back someday, but it's like, it, it's a surreal memory for me to, to think back that that actually happened and, and to be able to live through it as a dairy grad and a, and a football alumni, it was, it was incredible. Yeah, I, I remember uh, the, the whole thing was a blur because I was the whole the whole week uh, was a complete blur because I all I kept saying to myself and, and your brother can can attest to this. I kept saying, uh, I just don't want to do something to screw this up to be the reason <laughs> we lose. And, and, and I kept saying, so we were we were on the absolute top of our game all week. I mean, Kim, poor Kim was was up to her ears and stuff to do and. And, you know, every, everyone was just overwhelmed. I mean, we were digging for charter buses. We were selling pre-sale tickets like crazy. Um, you know, any of the ADs that have been through it before, there, there's so many directions that you have to follow. And you have to make sure the teams arrive at a very specific time, at a very specific location. And, and you just don't want to screw it up. And, and 
I remember probably until the end of the first quarter, everything was a blur. I don't remember anything about the first quarter. And uh, but we got into the stadium. We were we were kind of walking the halls. Um, we made some jokes. Some things went wrong, and we fixed them up a little bit and got things moving. But um, I got into the stadium and, and I got onto our sideline, and I was standing there, and, and people were talking to me. I had no idea what they were saying, but <laughs> at some point, I turned around, and and I just looked at the crowd, and and that was such an overwhelming feel, uh, feeling because there were thousands of dairy people up there, and everybody bought the hats with the DA logo on them, and that's all you saw, and, and that was a that was a, a very heartwarming moment and, and kind of an overwhelming moment for me. Because I just couldn't believe the amount of people that are that are up there that are backing the kids that are on the field, the coaches, our program, and that we're that we're we're a part of this. That we're a part of something this big. And you know, sports are a very important part in people's lives. They're an important part in my life as, as well as you guys, or else we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And uh, but they're they're an important part in, in people's lives that aren't involved in, in, in what we're doing. So um, they're the lifeblood of, of the dairy community, and, and we're going to continue to do. Uh, everything that we possibly can to to continue to improve this program over the next couple of years. Yeah, and for me personally, I think the greatest part was seeing a lot of dairy people that I haven't seen for a long time, whether they're my former teammates or, you know, uh, guys and, and girls that graduated, you know, after me that you kind of recognize and say, wait, how have you been? You know, to be able to tailgate with those people and see them at the game, and it was – it was, uh, again, a memory that certainly I, I'll never forget being able to, to see so many dairy people fly in and, and drive in from long distances just to, to come to Heinz Field and, and certainly be a part of it. Yeah, yeah I, w- I wouldn't doubt that uh, we're probably going to be back down there sometime in the next six to seven years or five to seven years, rather. We'll hold you to that. That's a, that's a prediction right there from Brett Miller. I'll see you down there. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. We really do appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you outside of uh, electronically sometime sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Brett. That is Brett Miller, Athletic Director at Dairy Area. That is Dan Flickinger. I'm Sean Myers. We'll catch you again on a future edition of the Quarantine Q&A. It's right here on the Westmoreland Sports Network.